simple to use and multiple sample handling is possible with this. Also, the running cost that is using HTTL3, the costs are quite low, maintenance costs are low because it's quite a rugged instrument. And uh, the layer that you have, it's a disposable layer, easily can be disposed, unlike column uh, chromatography. There are a number of such advantages and conveniences because of which HPTLC is quite popular, just like PLC. PLC is also popular because it is very easy to do and carry out. It is not so oh, tough as a PLC where we have to maintain so many rigid conditions. So these are some advantages because of which why HPTLC is so popular. And now we look at the principle, like I told you, it's similar to PLC. So separation may result due to absorption or partition depending upon the nature of absorbance used on plates and also this solvent system that is used for Della. The phase, the stationary phase and the mobile phase. Based on the nature of the stationary phase, if it is absorbing, then the separation is due to differences in absorption coefficient for the various substances in the mixture. If it is uh, partition chromatography which decides the uh, separation, then the stationary phase must be a liquid that is invisible with the solvent phase, which is the uh, mobile phase. So here you have, based on various parameters, you could have layer of uh, adsorbent or it's also known as sorbent. So you have layer of uh, sorbent, 100 micrometer, that is the adsorbent thickness. It's 100 micrometer in HPTLC, whereas in PLC it is 250 micrometer. The layer is thicker in PLC compared to HPTLC, and that's why HPTLC is a faster technique compared to TLC. Uh, Coming to the efficiency, the efficiency uh, of HPTLC is much higher due to the smaller particle size that is used. Uh, whereas in TLC, the particle size is much greater. So uh, naturally, the efficiency is lower. Why is the bigger particle size going to lead to lower efficiency? Because greater the particle size, smaller the surface area, available for separation, available for absorption. And that is why less amount of substance can be absorbed in a given area. More the surface area, faster the absorption, and therefore faster the equilibrium that is achieved, and better would be the separation. That's why we always aim for greater surface area. Once we have greater surface area with smaller particle size, our efficiency automatically goes up. The separation in case of HPTLC can be achieved in 3 to 5 centimeters, whereas in TLC, it takes about 10 to 15 centimeter length of travel before separations are complete and you get efficient separation. Uh, regarding the scanning part, use of UV visible fluorescence, etc., can be used for scanning. Whereas a scanner is an advanced, uh, the scanner that's uh, used in PLC, um, HPTLC, is an advanced type of densitometer. In case of PLC, uh, it is not possible to scan. So you will be uh, doing a manual type of uh, detection as well as visualization. Coming to sample spotting, HPTLC, we use an auto sampler, whereas for TLC, we will use manual spotting. Now, the difference here is if you're using an auto sampler, then um, the reproducibility will be much better. If you're using manual spotting, then reproducibility is not the same because from uh, each time you're spotting it, you may spot a little a different amount. You may be covering a different area. There are various kinds of variations that could happen when you're doing a manual spotting. But uh, with an auto sampler, the size of the band or the spot would be the same. The amount that is transferred onto the plate would also be the same. Um, so you would get better.
better reproducing the next parameter being analysis time this is much shorter for HTPLC uh, compared to TLC while the analysis completed more faster in HTPLC because of the shorter migration distance you just saw here in the earlier case you have separation uh, completed in three to five centimeters if it is completed in three to five centimeters that means uh, it is a shorter uh, development. So you have your three to five centimeters, whereas here you have 10 to 15 centimeters, almost three times the uh, distance has to be traveled. So naturally, the time uh, for migration would be much longer in case of TLC, and it would be a shorter uh, time for migrating the distance required for a complete separation. Uh, so analysis time is much shorter. You can do more analysis within a given period of time. Uh, coming to the solid uh, support, what type of solid supports can be used? You have a wide choice of stationary phases like silica gel for normal phase. You have CA, CA team for reverse phase mode. So in the case of HPTLC, we can have both normal phase as well as reverse phase HPTLC. In TLC, it is usually normal phase because the uh, um, useful adsorbents are silica gel, sickle gel, alumina, these type of adsorbents which satisfy all the requirements for adsorbents to be used in chromatography. And all these are polar adsorbents, and that's why we can go only for normal phase in most cases. It's very difficult to go for reverse phase in a normal TLC procedure. And then uh, regarding the development chamber, you uh, can have or you require to use less amounts of mobile phase. Uh, you'll be using very small amounts of mobile phase because the length of travel is smaller. The paper, sorry, the plate uh, sizes are smaller. To cover the plate size, uh, it would require less amount of mobile phase. The plates are much larger. And uh, why the plate is large? Because separation requires a longer distance of travel. If you require a longer distance of travel, then the amount of mobile phase required would also be much longer. And uh, that is the reason why more amount of mobile phase is required here. The features of HPPLC. So the what are the unique features of HPPLC? Mostly, this is in comparison to TLC. Uh, simultaneous processing of sample and standard uh, can be undertaken. This is true even for TLC. So this is a feature of HPPLC, which I have mentioned here, in comparison to HPLC. That is the other more co very commonly used high-performance technique. This is the other high performance technique, HPTLC. So, HPTLC, when you compare with HPLC, HPLC, you cannot process both the sample and the standard at the same time, in the same run. But in case of HPTLC, you can make both the spot ends, sample as well as standard, in the same run. And so, a comparison would be more correct because all the conditions are maintained the same. So you get better analytical precision and accuracy, and hence, therefore, there is less need for use of internal standard. Because whenever you use internal standard, you are getting in one more component. So you have to ensure that the internal standard is pure. It does not have impurities. It is not going to give rise to any errors. So the way it is introduced, how much is introduced, its concentration, everything should remain the same. But in case of HPTLC, there is less need for internal standard. In most cases, it is not required. In case of HPTLC, many analysts can work simultaneously because you can have a number of spots or bands on one plate. And all this is done automatically by the uh, instrument itself. So uh, you, each of the analysts needs to just prepare his or her sample and load it and the whole procedure would be carried out. Shorter analysis time and less cost per analysis. 
Total analysis time is in comparison to CLC. Net cost per analysis is in comparison to HCLC. Because HCLC is also short uh, development time. But the entire, uh, say you have a number of standards and a sample, since each one has to be injected separately, the overall time for a particular experiment would be more in case of HPLC. In HPLC, since we can uh, load all the standards and the sample on the same plate and have a single run, it completes in a short time. Then uh, it also has low maintenance cost. This is also in comparison with HPLC because HPLC is an expensive uh, instrument, expensive to maintain, expensive to run. Simple sample preparation, also this is in comparison with HPLC because you can uh, handle the samples of different nature in case of HPLC. There is no question of a column like in case of HPLC, which you have to be very careful and not damage the column. In this case, it's an open system and uh, you can easily change the uh, stationary phase. So it's not that expensive as an HPLC column. So sample preparations are much more simpler, very similar to, almost similar to the CLC method. No prior treatment for solvents like filtration and degassing, which is a must in case of HPLC. So this is a direct comparison with HPLC again. And no mobile phase uh, consumption per sample. I've already told you the reasons for this why mobile phase uh, per sample uh, consum uh, mobile phase consumption per sample is low because the distance of travel is less and so it gets uh, developed very fast so a shorter mobile phase run is sufficient. No interference from previous analysis because fresh station phase and mobile phase is used for each analysis hence no contamination takes place. Visual detection is possible. It's an open system, unlike the HPLC, which is a column, and so it's a closed system. Non-UV absorbing compounds can be detected by post-chromatographic derivatization. So you can actually derivatize it after uh, the separation has taken place very easily by exposing to various reagents and uh, hence with different compounds, which are actually not UV absorbing could be made UV absorbing and then detected. So the steps involved in HPDLC. We have all these steps, starting from collection of chromatographic layers, sample and standard preparation, layer pre-washing, this is to purify layers, layer pre-conditioning, this is saturation of the chamber, application of sample and standard on the plate, chromatographic development, Detection of spots, scanning, documentation, which is the last one. All this is done in HPTLC. So here I have put the steps in a different way in a flow diagram. We start with sample preparation, and before uh, the sample is applied, you have to complete all these three steps: selection of chromatographic layer, pre-washing, and pre-conditioning of the chamber. And then you apply the sample on the plate, you place the uh, sample, uh, sorry, the plate with the applied sample into the chromatographic chamber for a chromatographic development. This is followed by, after the development is over, you detect the spots and finally it is scanned and the results are documented. So we start with the first one, selection of chromatographic layer. Now in the case of CLC, we were preparing uh, the absorbent layer. In case of HPTLC, pre-coated plates are used. Different support materials are available. You can have aluminum sheets, which are the most commonly used one, but you could also have other materials. And uh, different solvents are available. Again, here the most common one is silica gel. And that's how 80% of the analysis is done with silica gel GF. I hope you remember what is silica gel GF. It is silica gel with a binder that is gypsum and a fluorescent indicator, which if you place the plate 
under a UV lamp, the whole plate will fluorine. If you're using fluorine, you get a greenish yellow uh, fluorine. And any substances which are non uh, UV, uh, non fluorescent, they, that can be later on observed as dark bands on the skin. For basic substances, alcohols and steroids, you can use alumina or aluminium oxides can be used. Amino acids, dipeptides, sugars, and alkaloids. Separation can be done by using cellulose as the chromatographic layer. And non polar substances, fatty acids, carotenoids, cholesterol, they require reverse phase systems. That is the RP uh, stationary phases. Reverse phase uh, 2, RP2, RP8, RP18. That is C2, C8, and C18 is used as the stationary phase. Exhaust. Now, the sample and standard preparation is the next uh, step to avoid interference from impurities and water. You have to ensure that you uh, prepare the sample in such a way that uh, you don't introduce impurities. That means you use pure samples. And water should not be uh, introduced also. Uh, so, avoid water as far as possible. Use non polar uh, solvents in which the sample or the standard is available. You should ensure low signal to noise ratio. Uh, signal to noise ratio uh, should be uh, low for the impurities. Uh, then you should have a spread, uh, for the, particularly for the mobile phase that is running. Spread baseline should be obtained. If you don't get a straight baseline, that means you get small peaks and troughs in the baseline. You have a zigzag baseline. Then if your sample is being a very small peak, it will get masked by the zigzag baseline. That's why it is always preferable to have a straight baseline. So noise should be low. This will help to improve LOD. LOD stands for limit of detection. How small a quantity can be detected, that is what uh, is LOD. So you should have LOD, a smaller value, so that your method is very sensitive. The solvents that are used are methanol alone, or it could be chloroform, methanol, ammonia in the ratio 90 is to 1 is to 0 0.1, or you could have methylene chloride mixed with methanol in 1 is to 1 ratio, you could have just 1% ammonia or 1% acetic acid. These are various solvents that are used for preparing samples and samples. Once you have prepared uh, the sample and the standard, and you have prepared uh, and applied it, dry the plates and store in dust-free atmosphere. Regarding the application, we will see a little later in sample application. Before that, we need to now you have already, you have the plate, the pre-coated plate, so you need to activate the pre-coated plate. So freshly opened box of plate does not require activation because the layer of adsorbent is highly active. Plates exposed to high humidity or kept on hand for long time should be activated because it will easily adsorb water or moisture on its surface. Hence, the, it is no longer an active adsorber because there's a layer of water on it. And activation is done by placing in an oven at 110 to 120 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes prior to spotting. This is similar to TLC. So I hope you remember what is activation. Activation is removal of water or solvent used to uh, prepare the slurry which is coated on the plate. So in this case, if we are using pre-coated plates, it will be moisture from the atmosphere, which could be absorbed on the plates which have been exposed to humid atmosphere. So we need to remove it. And removing moisture, that's why we go to a temperature above 100 degrees. Prefer this 110 to 120 degrees for 30 minutes. This is done prior to spotting. Aluminium sheets, uh, pre-coated aluminium sheets, should, however, be kept in between two glass plates and placed in oven at 110 to 120 degrees centigrade for 
15 minutes. This is to ensure that they do not lose their space and they do not warp. Uh, so they remain flat later for the development. Now uh, we come to the application of sample and standards. Now the usual concentration range uh, is 0.1 to 1 microgram per mm, uh, which is applied. Above this causes poor separation because uh, they will get mixed up. The amount is too much for the bands to separate well. You can have Linomix uh, 4. It's an automatic application. You also have 5 now, Linomax 5. These are all from the company Command. So you can see here. So how it applies? This is the application. So you have the nitrogen gas is actually uh, used to spray the sample and the standard from syringe on PLC plate. So as this takes press, this plate is moved back and forward under this. So over a small distance, it keeps on spraying over uh, so that you get a small band spray and that over that it is repeatedly sprayed so that you get sufficient quantity. That means one and then it's transferred, uh, so a few microliters is transferred to get the required quantity onto the plate. Bandwise application is possible in HPPLC and it's the preferred type of application because it gives better separation and high response to densitometer is also observed. Why do you get better separation? Band separation always gives you better separation than spot because bands occupy a small uh, distance uh, in the line of uh, migration. Um, they are spread uh, widthwise, but heightwise they will be small. So more number of bands could be observed in a smaller length of space. Selection of mobile phase, you have two types of uh, HPTLC, it could be done. So the mobile phase depends on what type of HPTLC we are going for. If it is normal phase, then the stationary phase is polar and the mobile phase is non-polar. The non-polar compounds are eluted first because of lower acidity to stationary phase. It's always light uh, attraction light. So stationary phase, if it is polar, then it will hold polar substances more strongly on its surface. Uh, Non-polar so, uh, compounds will not be held so strongly. On the other hand, mobile phase is non-polar. So like dissolved light. So non-polar compounds will be more soluble in mobile phase. So they are less held uh, by stationary phase. They are more, uh, have more affinity to mobile phase. So they move faster with mobile phase. And hence, they are eluted first. So, uh, that's why they need this first. On the other hand, polar compounds are retained because of high acidity to the stationary phase and they are eluted later. That's how separation takes place in normal phase from action. In reverse phase, it's just the opposite. Here you can see stationary phase is non polar. If stationary phase is non polar, the non polar compounds will be retained because of the higher acidity with stationary phase and they will be eluted much uh, slower, slowly. They take longer time to be eluted, or they take longer time to move over the stationary phase. Now, mobile phase is polar. These two should be, if one is non-polar, the other has to be polar. They should uh, not be of the same polarity. Mobile phase is polar, so polar compounds have greater solubility in mobile phase, and therefore they get eluted first, because they of the lower acidity with stationary phase, higher solubility in mobile phase, which uh, leads to them being carried faster with the mobile phase. Selection of mobile phase also uh, tells you a number of other things like uh, three to four component mobile phases should be avoided. Why multi-component mobile phase should be avoided? One of the reasons is when you use a multi-component mobile phase, then uh, you have to ensure that the ratio in which the two or more solvents are present, 
they are, are that ratio is maintained throughout. Now, if one is more volatile, it may volatilize, and therefore the ratio will not be limited. To avoid this, not more than two is recommended. Uh, three to four should be avoided. Multi-component mobile phase once used is not recommended for further use because there could be variations in the ratio of the two uh, solvents involved. Solvent composition is expressed by volumes and uh, sum of volumes is usually 100. It's not necessarily 100, it's usually 100. Uh, twin truck chambers are used in which only 10 to 15 ml of mobile phase is required. I'll show you a picture of that. Uh, this is just to um, reduce the consumption of mobile phase. If you have a, a full one chamber, you will have to put in more mobile phase. If you have a partition in the you will be uh, able to put in less mobile phase. Components of mobile phase should be mixed and then introduced into the twin truck chamber. Preconditioning is nothing but chamber saturation. Unsaturated chamber causes high RF values. If this is a must, preconditioning has to be done since we are dealing with very small amounts, small uh, plates, all this. It's a much more sensitive technique, so uh, all the these should also be uh, kept rigidly. Now, you saturate the chamber by line. How do you uh, saturate the chamber? By lining with the tip paper for 30 minutes prior to get up. So, this is similar to TLC. This uh, ensures uniform distribution of solvent papers because the filter paper gets uh, uh, saturated with uh, the mobile phase and it starts here. Volatilizing from there and the whole atmosphere inside the chamber will be um, saturated with solvent vapor. Less solvent would then be required for sample to travel the required distance and lower RF values would be obtained. So unsaturated chamber causes higher values because the solvent uh, front will start evaporating. It will uh, be lost to the atmosphere. And therefore, the solvent front will not be proceeding at a fast rate, whereas the samples will be moving faster. They come very close to the solvent front, and that's why you get higher RF values. Because RF is distance traveled by sample to standard, and therefore you get higher values. If the solvent is moving fast and carrying the samples, then the distance traveled by solvent would be higher, denominator would be higher, and therefore you get lower RF values. So this is the usefulness of having a preconditioned chamber. This is the twin truck chamber, what I was telling you earlier. You could have it like this. Uh, so if you did not have this, if it was a single chamber, then you have to fill in the whole area. Now, if you have a twin truck chamber, that is two different trucks, you can fill in small amounts of salt in there, both the four. You can have two portions, you can have two plates, and each plate will be independent of each other. Chromatographic development and drawing. So this is where you will uh, develop your chamber. You can see the developing taking place here. You actually introduce a plate here, and then it is dip, uh, here you have the solvent system. The plate is lowered into the solvent system. The development takes place, and afterwards, you withdraw the plate. You open this, take the plate out, and take for drawing. So after development, remove the plate, and mobile uh, phase is removed from the plate to avoid contamination of lab atmosphere. This can be done by drying in vacuum density. So immediately, the mobile phase has to be removed once the plate is removed from the development phase. Next step would be detection and visualization. So detection under UV light is first choice. It's a non-destructive uh, technique and spots of fluorescent compounds can be seen at 254 nanometer. 
If you have fluorescent compounds, you can observe at 254 nanometer. So uh, this is the chamber, a command UV chamber. This is a UV lamp that is used, you can see here. So you have to view through this. So detection under UV light is the first choice because it is non-destructive. And for the fluorescent compounds, we use 254 nanometer, or we can use 366 nanometer also, a little longer wavelength. Because the different compounds require different wavelengths to be excited and to fluoresce. Spots of non-fluorescent compounds can be seen uh, if the stationary phase uses fluorescent. That is something like silica gel PF or silica gel F. In this case, the stationary phase will be fluorescent and non-fluorescent compounds which are separating, they will be observed as dark spots. Non-UV absorbing compounds like ethyl butyl, dicyclomine, etc. can be uh, detected by dipping the plates in 0.1% ideal solution. There are different ways in which you can cause a detection. When individual component does not respond to UV, then you can also adopt derivatization. You can derivatize that compound so that it absorbs UV radiation, and then you can observe under the UV lamp. So, this is how the output of an HPDLC looks. This is the separated component. You can see the various bands that are separated, and each of these bands this is a 1D uh, chromatogram, this is a 2D chromatogram. So, these are the ways you will. Uh, get the chromatograms. The quantification sample and standard should be chromatographed on the same plate. After development, the chromatogram is scanned. The MAC TLC scanner can scan the chromatogram in two modes reflectance or in translucence mode, by absorbance or by fluorescence mode. So, either of the two, in either of the two modes. Scanning speed is selectable up to 100 millimeter per second. Uh, spectra recording is fast. 36 tracks with up to 100 feet windows can be evaluated. So it's very fast quantification. Calibration of single and multiple le levels with linear or non-linear regressions are possible for uh, something like stability testing and dissolution profile serial level calibration. Statistics such as RSD. RSD refers to relative standard deviation are reported automatically. So that's an added feature. You don't have to sit and calculate it. Concentration of analyte in the sample is calculated by considering the sample initially taken as well as the dilution factor. So these are the things that you have to uh, put into your program and you get the automatic results. You need to the documentation. Uh, this is an added feature of HPTLC. EMERC introduced plates with imprinted identification code, supplier name, item number, batch number, and individual plate number. Avoid manipulation of data at any stage. Coding automatically gets recorded during photo documentation. So when you're using the plate, all these gets documented automatically. Manipulation can be avoided to a large extent. Validation of analytical methods can also be easily carried out. All validation parameters such as precision, accuracy, LOD, that's limit of detection, limit of quantification, that is LOQ, ruggedness, robustness, these can be performed. And lastly, coming to application, simultaneous dissemination of benazepril, hydrochloride, and hydrochlorothiazide can be carried out. Analysis of semi-permanent hair dyes can be done. Determination of active ingredients in herbal and pharmaceutical formulations. You can collect some more uh, specific examples under this, particularly pharmaceutical formulations. Cosmetic and environmental analysis can be carried out using HPTLC. Metallurgy and electroplating also utilize HPTLC separation. Toxicology and forensic analysis also use HPTLC technique. So widely applicable technique, extensively used, particularly because of its advantages, low cost, low running cost, low maintenance cost, fast development, and everything is documented um, also automatically. 
that completes this chapter. Uh, you these are the references. You have a book by uh, PTCC. You can also use the other books. You have lots of internet uh, sources also available.